Hi there, welcome to the Miria Vahala Art Studio where better methods equals better paintings. Uh, what I thought I would do uh, for you in this video is do this little painting and paint it in a whole bunch of different colors throughout and then end up with whatever I end up with so that you could see what um, the painting might look like with different color combinations. And uh, I hope that by the time that you're done with this color play of Creek and Meadow that you will um, have learned color combinations that you like better and colors that you might not like which is also very valuable information so in the end what happened with this uh, painting is it ended up being a combination of three analogous colors overall of uh, magenta purple and a warm blue and a couple of the opposites of um, yellow and orange and little flecks of green so basically we end up with two sets of uh, analogous colors and they are complements to each other. So um, anyway, I hope you find something uh, that you like in the colors on this. So if you want to give this painting a try, uh, it could be a lot of fun. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for future videos. Thanks very much. Okay, let's get started on Color Play Creek and Meadow. I decided to start with my darkest hues and I'm using ultramarine blue. In a landscape in this format with this type of light, the darkest things are going to be the verticals and that would be the trees. To create an interesting juxtaposition of warm and cools, the next thing I did was take pyrrole orange and placed it in places on top of that magenta color. And while that paint was wet, I took my knife and color shapers and scratched into it. Here I'm taking the ultramarine blue, adding white, which is a tint, and putting it on the edge of the trees to create some rim lighting. I plan to put some glazes of color on top of this when it's dry. Next I took the ultramarine blue and the tint of ultramarine blue and added it to other places within the painting to create color continuity. As I often do when I'm painting in this style, I make sure to leave little bits of the background color showing through. The distant trees on the right hand side of this image are also fairly dark so I took the ultramarine blue and added some marks in there as well, going vertically with my palette knife. The sandbars in the photograph are a warmish tan color. I'm going to try that first. I probably will change it but I want to show you what it looks like. For the sandbars I'm painting the closer sandbars a little deeper on the canvas and as it goes into the distance I make them narrower vertically. This shows you that we're going into perspective. Well I obviously didn't turn the camera on for the background but that background mountain and trees is made with tints of ultramarine blue. A little bit darker for the foreground trees going lighter into the distance. And then following that, I'm trying out some uh, Benzi yellow glazes on top of the orange to, to really brighten it up. I also put some of that yellow glaze on those sandbars to show you what that will look like as well. To make some of the blue marks in the painting go more to a green color, I'm adding the yellow Benzi on top of those too. To darken the distant trees in the background in the mountains, I've taken a dioxazine purple and glazed over top. I've also put a little bit of this uh, purple glaze on top of the foreground trees as well. This is to show you what taking phthalo green over purple is going to look like, as well as what the phthalo green over top of the tints of ultramarine blue looks like. Notice how much darker and cooler those trees are starting to get. Later in the painting, I'm going to show you what these trees look like in completely different colors. The water is one of the lightest areas in this painting, so now we have our lightest areas placed, we have our darkest on the vertical trees, and lots of our midtones. So now we can see where we need to go with the rest of our painting in terms of shade. Here I've added back some of the tints of ultramarine blue in the foreground and then I made a teal color with the phthalo blue and a little of the benzy yellow to add into the water just to see what that might look like. At this stage the painting is half cool and half warm, half dull and half bright. So that is something that you don't want to have in a painting. You want to have dominance of brightness and of temperature. Notice how much better those sandbars look in a tint of a purple color instead of that sandy brown color. 
This is because it lives better with all the other violets in the painting. Okay, let's warm this painting up a little bit. Let's put some cadmium orange into the background colors. And then let's add some of the glaze of a benzy yellow on top of the tints of ultramarine blue in the foreground and on top of where we'd put the glazes of phthalo green on the trees. And let's see what that looks like. You can also warm up other areas of the painting like the background trees and the water as well. This is to show you that the painting is getting warmer, but we still don't have color continuity. The green trees didn't look quite right. So I've gone back to a purple color where I've added some tints of purple and some darker purples into the trees. And then we're going to go back into there and glaze again. I think I need to change the foreground again and get some of the magenta color back in there. So with titanium white, I went in the foreground, covered up lots of what I did, and reglazing with the magenta once that was dry. I'm taking the magenta and adding it to the trees as well and, and this is all in the hopes of getting this color continuity going on that we want. For this color play exercise I'm showing you lots of things but at this stage the painting could almost be done. I could just put a little bit of orange and yellow in that foreground and leave those trees kind of in the purpley colors and I think that might work. But before we do that I want to show you, some, show you something else. I'm going to move those trees back to a, a greenish color. So this is an ultramarine blue tint and a little bit of a tint of purple in some of the foreground areas. And let's see what happens next. Okay, here's the phthalo green glaze. Notice that contrast, the blue green against the yellow and oranges of the meadows. That's a pretty big contrast. Let's warm it up one more time with the Benzi Yellow Glaze. I want to show you what happens when you add a opaque red on top of the color of green. Before I do that, I'm just going to let this glaze dry and I'm going to go back into the meadow area and brighten it up a lot. I'm going to take the Benzi Yellow and make some skittery marks across the meadows to create some more light and brightness in there. Okay, here is the pyro red light that I'm adding uh, little bits in the foreground. Then I'm going to go up into those trees and make them really warm again, this time using opaque paint and allowing the bits of green to shine through. I'm also playing with bits of cadmium orange, which is also opaque and a lighter shade than the red. So I can place that on top of the meadow to reshape the trees and go from there. So here you can see that the contrast of the red to the green might be handy in some paintings, but in this one I don't think that it quite works. So I am taking um, an opaque yellow, this is cadmium yellow medium, and making the light edges on the trees. This yellow is lighter than the orange and the orange was lighter than the red. So it's a way of doing tinting in a painting while still keeping it warm. So now we've swung the painting back around again to a warm and bright painting. So when playing with the uh, pyro red light and the oranges and the yellow colors, uh, there's no longer the dark values in the vertical trees. And we've also need to put in some dark values uh, underneath those uh, bits of metal that are going down into the sandbars onto the water. So with dioxazine purple, I'm darkening up the reds and the purple and the red make a really nice neutral black. And you see the violet a bit more when you put the darks next to the violets of the meadow going into the water. Here's another color contrast that I want to show you. Orange and ultramarine blue are opposite on the color wheel. So to make this painting a little bit brighter looking, I'm taking the ultramarine blue and I'm going to put a little bit of white in it and tint it and put it behind those trees on the left hand side. And notice how much brighter the painting starts to look as we do that. I'm still allowing little bits of the background color to show through as well. The foreground meadow grasses are pretty warm as well, so to create some pretty contrasts, I'm taking that same mixture of ultramarine blue and white and placing some marks in the foreground. One of the last things I did is I went back and put titanium white in a few places and reglazed with some of the magenta. It created a little bit more lightness and brightness. 
One of the most important aspects of color is its value. So look at your painting when you think you're done in black and white or grayscale and see what it looks like. Notice how this painting looks bright even in grayscale and that is because the values are close together. I hope this gives you some ideas of colors to try on this painting. Have fun! Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for notice of new videos. Take care! Thank mm -hmm. you.